Welcome to Barton Ranch. Today, we're working on this vehicle here. Now this, a little background on this. It's a blue Chevy Aveo 2006. It was given to me at a time when I really needed an extra car. We were only down to two cars because I had to sell one to pay for uh, hospital bills for Dagan, his being born. Um, and then this car was given to me. Um, a little bit more background information on how the car has been treated. An old lady owned it before I did. And she did some off-roading in it, uh, not on purpose. The power steering pump had gone out and it would throw her up on curbs. She would hit uh, street signs and uh, it threw in a ditch in a culvert once. Um, there was a bunch of bent, the main cross member under here was bent. Uh, when I got it, I had to change the valve cover, bring you over here, had to change out the valve cover gasket, um, and when we popped this off, there was a bunch of, what would you call it, oil sludge? Yeah, sludge buildup. Yeah, sludge buildup, like she had missed a few oil changes, quite a few. Um, this car has 60, a little over 60,000 miles on it. Um, it's possible the oil's only been changed about maybe four or five times on it. Uh, that's how bad it was. So we did quite a few oil changes, um, put some oil, um, marble mixture oil. So, and that's the re-atomization of the oil, make it turn from sludge back into liquid. And we had to change quite a few oil filters. Um, it would plug them up. Uh, I put 500 miles on it, and that's just not high speeds, not running it for a long period of time. It's been about three months putting those 500 miles on this with the oil and the oil stabilizer in there. Um, now, we're gonna do an oil change, see how it goes. The AC doesn't work on this car. Uh, we recharged it, and it worked at the beginning of the 500 miles for a few days. I can't remember exactly how many, so we don't know exactly the size of the AC leak that we're looking at, but um, I'm here with Roy Toland with RT Auto. Uh, we're here at the shop, got on the four post lift, we're going to raise it up. He put, um, when he charged AC unit, he put some dye in there, so we should be able to find the leak. Um, not sure the size of the leak because I can't remember how long the AC lasted. It was great. Um, another, every car has its quirks, the horn doesn't work and the radio doesn't work. Um, we may know what's wrong with that, but this car has no electric windows, no electric mirrors. It is the base of the base. I guess it's an automatic, so would you say that's an upgrade? Okay, automatic is the only upgrade it, um, it has. Uh, so that's what we're working with. Stay tuned, I'll let you know what we find out. Dirty stuff. Oh, yeah. Have you seen any sludge come out yet? Well, at the. Oh, well, yeah, you can get it to where. Marble did its job. It re atomized into the oil. You can see the marble's the red Another tint you're tint. getting there. Mm -hmm. See the difference between the, oh. the oil pan? Yeah, yeah, there's some aluminum there, but yeah. it's some sludge buildup up here. Uh, yeah, right see there. See, it's starting to clean it up pretty good. You see, you're getting it all stripped off up there. 
Yeah. So those little flakes is what was been covering up that suction line, breaking up in chunks. Yeah, looks like it's been doing good. Yeah, it's doing its job. Gonna keep us from burning ourselves. I drove it less than a mile to get it here. <laughs> it don't take much for that converter to get hot. It's doing its job. All right, she's loose. Use the hand without the watch on it. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're waterproof. They're not oilproof. Yeah, plus the heat of the oil. Mm -hmm. there is any. Oh, yeah, you can really see the marble coming out of that. I bet that dang thing is plumb full of sediment. Nasty particulates. Not too bad. We ought to be suspended in that uh, paper part of the filter. You won't be able to really see it unless you cut it apart. Uh -huh. You have no issues out of it. And then after that, just do regular three to 4200, depending on how you're driving it. Forty-two hundred? Yeah, semi-synthetic oil. Oh, uh, I usually only three thousand. Yeah, that semi-synthetic. You can actually run it further than that. But you can go four, forty-two, ah. forty-five. I like to get it to where it's firm and you feel it bite, feel that rubber bite the metal, and not too much tighter than that, because it'll get it'll keep getting tighter. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes the rubber shakes. Yeah. Alright, so that's it on all change. We weren't able to find we weren't able to find the leak in the AC system with the sniffer on the bottom side. And we forgot to look. So this right here is your condenser. And behind it, here you can see over here, condenser and radiator. Um, but the condenser is what will be leaking. We didn't see any dye spots on that, on the underside, on any of the, the hoses. So we're going to drop it down and look at the ports on the top side now. All right, so our AC unit, unit, most of the the condenser, and we've got the compressors down there. Um, I'm not seeing anything on the top side of the compressor, uh, but our ports are back here. So what we're gonna do is just gonna take take these caps off and try not to lose them. Set them up here. I'm not seeing any dye on that one. It looks pretty clean. This one over here. No dye. There's, the rubber seal's kind of sideways on that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is some dye in that one. So that. It's a possibility of a leak right there. Valve stem right there is probably our problem. Okay, so we were not able to find the AC leak with the sniffer, or we want to confirm that the valve stem leak that we visually see, or we think we see, is actually a leak and not just some residual that was left on the valve stem. Um, sniffer didn't pick it up, so we're going to see how much... Um, I just totally drew a blank Freon. How much Freon is actually in the system? Um, so he's got his gauges hooked up. 
it may be that there's not enough Freon for it to even register or the leak to be a leak anymore. Okay, so we found the leak. Um, it is that service port. I'll show it right here. Yep, there's the leak. Mm -hmm. Nice. And our fix, we're just gonna tighten it just a little bit, see if that stops it. Blow it out. In case there was some junk in there. Now we'll get our soap out. Soap. And then we're going to check it like you would a hole in a tire. Throw some soapy water on there. If it bubbles, it's still there. If it doesn't, we're good. Yep, there's our leak. Yep. Got tons of bubbles. So it is a pretty substantial leak. Oh wow. Alright, so we got that core changed out there. As you can see, there's no more leak in there. I guess you can't see, but there's no more leak in there. Now when we took off the uh, air intake tube, you know, here's the air box, has the air filter in it. Air comes from the outside through the filter, through this tube, into the uh, throttle body, and the air intake into the engine. That tube was torn right here. So now we got to fix that. All right, so we got the caps back on the ports. Tape this up because I don't want to buy a new part. Plus, right now, parts are kind of hard to come by. And we're good to go. Oh, I put the the pretty cover on the valve cover. Well, it covered the spark plug wires. Go to the top of the valve covers. And we're ready to go. AC's charged back up. No leaks. Oil's changed. Thanks for watching. I'll put Roy's contact information. Um, he is a certified diesel mechanic. Uh, he can work on cars, not diesel vehicles as well. I'll put his information down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time on Bar 10 Ranch.